everybody, Amy here from Knit Collage. I'm excited to welcome you back to my making vlog where we chat about all things yarn, knitting, and crochet. And this is episode 18? No, 19. 19. And I am on a roll since January, around mid-January of producing these every two weeks. And it has been so fun to share my finished objects, my work in progress knits, a little bit of behind the scenes from things we're releasing here at Knit Collage to tools I enjoy and questions from you that I answer here on the episode. So we're gonna hop to it. I have only a few finished things to share this week, but many other things. <laughs> so the format of these is first I share my finished objects, then I'm going to talk about work in progress knits. Usually I share a tool of some type. This time I don't have a tool, but I did just come back from Vogue Knitting Live New York City, so I have a yarn haul. And I have not been yarn shopping at an in-person shop or event in quite a long time. So it's a little bit of yarn. I got, I got some skeins and a few other cute things like a project bag and some earrings that I really want to show you that are all yarn related. So we're going to dive into that and then I'm going to answer the questions that some of you posed to me in the Ask Me Anything questionnaire that I have live for anybody to ask me anything at any time. So here we go. We're going to dive in. So just a quick note, our Creative Knitters membership is now open and we would so love to invite you to join. The video I posted last week is all about that membership, why I began it, and what you get when you join and really the whole mission and goal behind that community. So if it feels like a fit to you, if your intuition is calling you towards the group, I want to encourage you to join. Of course, you can cancel at any time. We ask for 30 days notice and that's that. So I'll link to that video in the show notes. It's the one I posted just last week. Secondly, we have Finish It February going on right now. So it is February 21st as I am recording this, which means there are seven or eight days left of February, depending on how you measure. And this is a, just a community challenge I put out there to anybody on social media in our community to join me to try to finish any lingering work in progress knits or crochet projects that you may have that have been on your needles or hooks for, for a long time. And to use the month of February as a time to just get them done and use the group as a way to hold each other accountable. So we have a Facebook group and that group has been going off. In just the past week, I saw so many finished objects being posted. So that was really cool. And that's it. If you want to join in, I can link to that in the show notes too. There's still time, although only seven days left. So you might be feeling like, oh, I missed it. Of course, we'd love to have you join for seven days too. So I finished my Kaleidocoat. As a Creative Knitter member, Rosemary would say, she's the first one to ever make a Kaleidocoat. So this is definitely inspired by hers and I love it. So I added the crochet border. I just used a mix of yarns and I've got that bell sleeve happening and you can't really see the bottom, but it's so happy and fabulous. It goes just longer than my tush and I absolutely love it. I'm closing it off here with a shawl pin made by Joe Wadler. She's a jewelry designer that we contribute that contributes to our website quite a bit. And I have, I have put in an order for these on the site. They're so beautiful. She gave this to me at Vogue Knitting Live and I love it. We do have these heart shaped buttons on the site. If you're interested in seeing more of her work, she does buttons for us that are circle, flower, and heart. And they're just absolutely stunning. You can see their brass and their hand etched. So if that inspires you, I want to encourage you to go check that out. But the reason I wanted to show this is just because it's a perfect closure for the sweater. Of course, I could do buttons and I have a fair amount of kaleidoscopes already that have buttons and I like that. But this is, I think, the perfect thing for this. 
So that's that. Okay, so the next thing I've been working on, I think I may need to demo this for you, is the Handspun Hope Shawl collaboration pattern. I believe I showed you this a few times and I finished the first sample. I've been working on this for a long time. Diana from Handspun Hope sent me her yarn a long time ago, probably six months, and I wanted to come up with a pattern design and it just took me a while to figure out what to do. So this is actually our bonfire shawl pattern updated. So that pattern is originally by Annie of Boho Chic Fiber Co, Annie Lupton, and I just tweaked it slightly. So I took out the linen stitch, which she does at the very start and at the end as a border and I increased the um I increased the stockinette rows between the garter rows from I think maybe she had two or four and I've got six and oh my god I can't tell you how much I love this so it's much bigger than our original bonfire shawl it's also a lighter weight so I absolutely love it is doing this amazing curly cue thing that shawls do sometimes. <laughs> and I, I just think it is so pretty and versatile. So I would totally wear it like this and you can't really see what the shawl is doing the curly cue thing. <laughs> it's so pretty. So I will release this pattern at some point. It may be a contender in our spring make along. So it's our yarn in Serenity. It's the Serenity Boucle yarn, the Brush Boucle, our Daisy Chain yarn, and then their worsted weight yarn, which is all hand spun in Rwanda and naturally dyed. It's super special yarn. So it is, it's just fantastic. And I think the key to the drape here is I did a wet block and I let the shawl accidentally sit in the water for about a half an hour. I was only going to do about 10 minutes. I let it sit for half an hour and then I let it dry for a few days um, on the blocking boards. And I just think that really helped the drape and it helped it lay really flat. So I'm so excited about this. We have three models for our upcoming photo shoot in three different sizes, and I'm planning to show one of these on each of the models. Um, so I'm really excited about that. We did that for the Corinne Cardi last spring. We showed three Corinne Cardis on three different models and three different sizes. And I think it was, it was just one of the most beautiful shots we've ever had in the history of the collage photo shoots. So I'm excited about that. And it doesn't take that long. So I have one more sample to show you now. It's it's on the needle. So, and I'm mid row, so I can't really show you more than that, but this is what it looks like. So that's the hand spun hope. This is our daisy chain and this is our serenity boucle yarn so this is more of a contrast stripe and i kind of like that it looks a little bit rugby feeling like it feels like a sport stripe a little bit which is i kind of like it and then i am planning the third one to be this color combo so this is their yarn and let me tell you what yarn that is it's colorway logwood and it is organic merino wool very cool. And then it'll be with these two yarns of ours. So Daisy Chain and Sea Siren. And then this is Ice Green in our Serenity. So very excited about that. And I am leaving for India on Friday. So I'm having, I will have a lot of travel time <laughs> to knit this. So I'm really just so pleased about that. So that's my finished object to show you, which I you know when you finish something it came, comes out even better than you think it's going to come out? That's how this worked. Now I showed you this in detail last time, but I thought it would be fun just to do one little fashion show. This is my generous sweater. I just had to finish the bind off, I think, in the previous week. So I finished it. And this is it. And yeah, it's very, very, very cute. Very slinky. It feels slinky and drapey even though it's bulky and I just 
love the way all the yarns came together in the moral and turned out. So super excited about that. Okay, let me check my notes here. Okay, so still have lingering as whips, my summer sweetness sweaters. I showed you those two weeks ago. Still have to do the seams and the armholes there and weave in all the ends. So those are my two projects that I must finish for finish of February coming up. And now I want to tell you a little bit about my other work in progress ideas and share all the yarn that I got from Vogue Knitting Live. Alrighty, so I'm super excited to share what I brought back from Vogue Knitting Live. Even though I was working in the booth the entire weekend, I managed to squeeze out for an hour on Sunday and I did do some yarn shopping damage. <laughs> and I am... Um, so excited. I haven't been at a yarn show like that where I've really been able to shop in years because of the pandemic. So it was so much fun. So the first yarn I bought was this Busy Peach cotton. Um, Wolverine was right next to us in the booth. So this is, of course, the first place I went shopping. And it is Pima Cotton, which I have never knit before. So she gave me some advice on knitting with it, as well as our Creative Knitters membership. They poured out advice to me, um, which is great. Swatching is important. It can be heavy and it can stretch over time. So super, super valuable insights. They also said that this isn't going to have a ton of recovery like a rib wood in a wool yarn in terms of stretchiness. It's not going to have that kind of stretch. So very, very helpful. I decided on the ranunculus. I really wanted to knit a cotton ranunculus pattern with this. I knit the ranunculus before, but I actually gifted it to one of my best friends. So I've been wanting to knit one for myself. And I thought I would try it with this wandering flock yarn that I also bought at Vogue Knitting Live. It is mohair. I thought I would hold these together and see how it looked. I love this yarn. It's just, the colors are so pretty. I didn't have a vision for it when I bought it. It was just calling to me. <laughs> so I've gotten pretty far on the ranunculus and the yoke but I'm not super happy with the way the colors look. And I think it's because this wandering flock yarn is calling for a different yarn to be held with, one that is more of an ivory or an oatmeal color. So I like the way it looks better with this yarn, which is just from my stash, um, or maybe even a lighter ivory. So I am actually going to rip this whole thing out and begin again. I also bought these yarns from Cowgirl Blues. These are also just silk mohairs and they didn't have two of the same colorway. They only had one, um, one and one, but I think I'm going to like them better with this. It's a bit more tonal. It's a bit more subdued. Sorry. It's hard to, it's hard to show it. Yeah, there we go. Um, but I think I'm going to like that better. And I think what I'll do is I'll just alternate these two balls of yarn using that helical knitting technique that I love. And then the cotton, because I do like the way that this looks with the cotton and the mohair. I think it looks really pretty and I'm liking the halo. I just don't love the wandering flock yarn with the gray color. It's just a color thing. So that's that. And that should not take me too long to knit. I remember when I knit it before, it took me about a week. Of course, that was the very beginning of the pandemic. So I was home a lot, but it was a pretty easy knit. I just wanted to share one other thing I got from the booth at Busy Peach. She had Broke and Crafty there, and I got this adorable project bag. I really like fruit print things <laughs> and I don't know why. I just think they're so cute. And I, I used to have a pair of fruit shoes when I was in high school and they were just really cute, like espadrille type shoes. And so it sort of reminded me of that. And I absolutely love it. The quality of the sewing is so nice. It's a nice lined pocket in there. And I'm just, I'm pumped about this. I may use it to hold all of my Chowgu shorties that I showed you before because the bag that those come in, the needles just fall out and it's 
stressful because they're all really short. So I thought this might be a good one for me to just keep all of those needles in a safe place, um, safe and secure. So I'm thinking about that. Okay, so I've got a few other yarns that I want to show you from Vogue Knitting Line. Just a few, just a few. <laughs> Just a few, just a few, just a small yarn haul. So this is another cowgirl blues yarn. It was so fun to see these yarns in person. This is a fluffy mohair. It's DK. Now this is the yarn that Cheryl Kubat originally used for the Saturday sweater update. You may remember I knit this in that acidy green slash neon yellow color for the mohair. This is what she used for that. So we're actually going to develop this as a pattern and do a pattern collaboration with Cowgirl Blues. It's a very cool company out of South Africa where they hand it, dye the yarn, and I'm excited about it. It probably won't be till fall, but it's just absolutely beautiful. And I got enough of this to make another sample in this yarn. Not a huge priority. It will be for, for fall, like I said. Now I did get one more color. Let me show you. I got this silk mohair as well. Actually might look good with this. Oh, I kind of like this by itself. It's so bright and happy. And then this is sort of the more moodier cousin. It's just so pretty. I love the golds, the orange, the olive green, and then those sort of muted rose pinks in there. There was only one skein. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I find it very inspiring. <laughs> So that's that. Um, I also hit the, I think I'm saying this right, Camellia Fiber Booth. And she had the absolutely most beautiful colors of yarn. I love, I'm really loving all these gray greens right now. So I bought these two yarns and I'm planning potentially to knit my son, my baby, who's a year and a half a winter sweater. Seeing as it's the end of February, I may not, or I may knit it in a very big size so he could wear it next year as well. I'm debating that, but I got this, which is a Surrey lace. So it's alpaca and silk. And then this one is a fingering merino wool. And oh my God, that color is like, it's just everything. <laughs> I love it. So that's super beautiful. Now, if you remember that Saturday sweater I showed you before, it was a bright yellow, acidy green. I love yellow. I'm, I really love yellow. And I couldn't say no to these. They're, it's just a different kind of yellow, right? It is so beautiful and light. And I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a neon pastel lemon. I think it is the most beautiful. So this is, I believe you say it, Ching Fiber from the UK, dyed in London, UK. And this is a baby Surrey alpaca with wool and silk. And then this is just a fingering weight yarn. So I don't have a big plan for these. Really, it was the color that was calling to me. And sometimes this can inspire color combos in our own yarn, which is why I love to buy. Like, like for example, this one, it's so fun to see how the hand-dyed hand -dyed colors come together. And sometimes it can inspire how I design our hand spun yarns, even though we're not hand dyeing or hand carding the fiber, it can just be inspiring. So I don't know if this will inspire any yarn designs when I'm in India, but I really love the colors and it's hard to find inspiration. You know, I'm, I'm picky. I'm sure you're picky too, right? About what you love. So when I see things I love, I do want to scoop them up because I know I won't have that opportunity again. So super excited about that. That's everything I got. However, I actually did order yarn a couple weeks ago that I'm going to show you too, which I really don't do that often, but I did because I was inspired by two projects. So I have a lot in my knitting queue right now. This is a book called Knit This by Veronica Lindbergh. She, she's a YouTuber and a knitwear designer. I watched her YouTube video where she knit her own wedding dress. It was absolutely amazing. And it was something like she knit it in six weeks. I could be wrong. It could be six months, but it was so inspiring. And I bought her book because of the video and 
I want to knit a lot of the sweaters in this book, but this one inspired me. It's called the Lazy Cat Cardigan. And I think it inspired me because I have nothing like this in my wardrobe. I love blouses and tops with prints and colors, but most of the sweaters I knit have a lot of color and pattern going on, like the kaleidoscope I showed you at the beginning, even this one. And this just feels like something that would be versatile for me to wear all the time that also fills a hole in my closet. So I'm very excited about this. It's a big needle and it looks really easy to knit. I believe it's a size 10 or yep, a size 10 and a size eight for the cuffs. So the pattern calls for this yarn, which is a drops yarn. I've never worked with drops yarn before. It's drops air. It was very inexpensive. You hold it double. It's very lightweight. In the content, there is polyester in it. So I've never really knit with polyester. I haven't in recent times, but I'm going to do it. The price point was the, was really enticing there. I think I had to get nine balls and it really wasn't that expensive. So that was awesome. And I think I really will wear this a lot. There's something nice about going with the pattern, you know, or the yarn that, you know, the pattern was designed into. This is one of those situations where I didn't trust myself to go and choose a new yarn. I kind of wanted to do just whatever Veronica suggested. So I am super excited about this. It's an oatmeal color, which I think will go with a lot of things in my wardrobe. So I may bring this for my trip to India as something to knit as well. <laughs> okay. The last thing I showed you this last week, this is my sea glass. Uh-oh, we got caught. This is my sea glass basket. I want to do another sea glass. I may wait a little bit to begin this because I just finished one sea glass and I just want some time. But I did buy a couple skeins of Odang fiber, farmer's daughter fiber yarn because in my original sea glass that I showed you last month, I used this yarn and I loved the fuzziness it added to the finished object. So that was one color I bought one color. I think this is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one. So it would be all these. And I own this one already. And I think this is a hedgehog fiber from a very old folk knitting live years ago. So it's sort of this sparkly, very light pastel vibe. And we will see if it feels too sweet or too candy feeling. I might actually not use those mint and periwinkle colors because I want it to feel a bit more neutral than candy. I don't know what the best word is, like rainbow sherbet candy. I don't want it to feel like that. So probably see how it goes as I knit it. So yeah, I've got a lot of things going through my mind and inspiring me knitting wise. But to tell you the truth, I haven't felt this inspired to knit things in a really long time. And I haven't felt like I've actually finished knitting projects um, at this clip in a really long time. And I don't know if that's finish it February or doing this, this vlog, but it is so much fun to feel like I've kind of got my knitting mojo back. So just a couple more things to show you from Vogue Knitting Live. It's not Vogue Knitting Live if you don't come home with some designs by Yasmin earrings. So I got these. I actually have a similar pair from her from years ago, maybe five years ago, and I lost one traveling. So I'm very excited to have a replacement pair. And then these are little like wear everyday studs. I just told you how much I love yellow, but they actually are the, the pattern on it is the knit stitch. It's stockinette. So I love that. I mean, I love things that show who I am and that I'm a knitter and I love yarn and knitting. So I love that these are like this subtle way of showing, oh yeah, I'm showing my love of yarn and knitting right here. <laughs> so I love those and I'm very excited to bring those into my jewelry um, fold. I'm a big earring person, so those will be great. Okay, so let's go to your questions. I have a few questions this week and I'm just looking at my computer over here so I don't miss anything. 
I have a question from someone in Europe. Any plans to make your yarns available more available via more online options in Europe? Import and tax expenses are insane. Okay, so I know it's such a bummer. The way that we do wholesale is if a shop contacts us we and says like, hi, I'm a shop in Europe or a shop anywhere and I'd love to sell your yarn, we set them up with a wholesale account if in fact they are a legitimate shop. And the reason we're not available in Europe is likely because folks have not contacted me to potentially sell our yarns there. And I don't actively go out and seek shops in Europe either. I believe our yarns are sold on loveknitting.com, which should make shipping easier within Europe. So you can absolutely check there. I know they have Daisy Chain. I think they have Spun Cloud. Not the entire line, but some. You can order through our site. And a year or so ago, we went through the process of investing in and setting up a system online so that you can pay the taxes, like any VAT tax, any duty charges when you check out on our site. So it's not a surprise when it gets to your country. And what's depressing here is that it is a lot but on the upside, it's not a surprise. So if you're in Canada, you can pay those up front. You know there's no surprises when that package hits customs in your country. It's the same for any country. Um, You can choose not to pay it. It's totally up to you. And maybe it will be, you know, sometimes with customs, it's not a science. It may be less or more sometimes, but this, we actually put it through a specific app through our website that tracks what all the VAT tax rules are in all these different countries so that we know them so that when you check out, you're good, you've paid it, it will clear customs quickly. So you can either take your chances or you can go through us and do that. So it is an option. However, it is an expensive option, I know. So I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry we don't have a way around that. We just want to make sure we're, we are being lawful, following the laws of each of the countries and, um, and making it as easy as possible for you too. If you have shops in Europe that you think I should reach out to, I'm happy to do that. You could leave me a comment. You could send me an email and let me know. And we could do that. Um, someone asked me my, okay, the same person. What's your birthday? It is May 19th. <laughs> I got another question about the bobble sweater pattern. I'm not clear on how to do the bobble stitch. So I would suggest that you take the class. You go into the knit you section of my website and you check out the snowfall bobble cardi class. I have a video class where I teach you how to knit this from start to finish. That might help you. I've also let Ann know our knitting teacher to contact you and help you with that pattern just in case you don't want to go the full class route and you think you might only need a teeny bit of help. She'll be in touch to help you out. Okay. Someone else asked, do you have a pattern for the into the woods hat? I purchased the yarn, but I don't have a pattern. Yes. And that's available on our website. And I will make sure to put that in the show notes. So if anyone's interested, they can check out that into the woods hat pattern. Last question. Has the mermaid cafe dreamland yarn been discontinued? Yes, it has. And in the future, I plan to cycle through yarns a bit more. I want a little bit more freshness in our yarn line and a a bit less uh, skews, which is just the number of yarns and colors we have in our inventory. So you will see me cycling through yarns a bit more. We'll always have a sale if something is going to be discontinued so you can snap it up. There's always a chance we might bring it back, but I'm more interested in new things. So yes, that has been discontinued. Is there a creative knitter group for participants from the Nordica. I know we have some members from the Netherlands. I am not sure if we have any members from, let's see, Norway or Sweden or Finland. I think those are the countries that you would consider um, Nordica. Excuse me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure off the top of my head if we have anyone from those countries. I know we have a few from the Netherlands, definitely France. We have a few from Australia, Hawaii. I think that's all I can remember off the top of my head. 
we would welcome you, you know, wherever you are, we, we welcome you with open arms into the community. So you don't have to have friends nearby in order to join, right? This is a online community. All the community takes place online and we would absolutely welcome you into the fold wherever you are. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for letting me share my yarn haul from BKL. <laughs> and next time, it might be a bit late. I might miss two weeks. Um, it might not be two weeks because I am going to India for 10 days starting on Friday. And we'll see when I get back if I'm able to do a video right away or it might be the following week. But I'm excited to show you what I bring back. I'm excited to show you the progress I make on all of these projects along the way. And yes, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, let me know if you have any questions or comments. And thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye.